Scientists have long been marveled by the secrets of the universe. However, the more they discover, the more they realize that they are only just beginning. Much of the limitations, though, are a result of the instrument and the capacity of the equipment astronomers are using. However, there's new space equipment in town and scientists are getting ready to be amazed by the findings they will make. The new James Webb Telescope promises to open up even more exciting parts of deep space, and some of them are downright terrifying. One of the places the Space Telescope will be pointed at is the very edge of the universe. What will the telescope see at the edge of the universe? Will it be able to see the edge of the universe? Stay tuned to find out. What do you do when you want to observe somewhere so deep in space that you can never reach? You send a space observation station. NASA has done precisely that by sending the James Webb Space Telescope to deep space so that it can help us see more of our universe. The question of what is at the edge of our universe cannot adequately be answered without first answering the question of the dimension of the universe. So just how large is the universe? The observable universe is 93 billion light years in diameter. Some scientists believe its true size is even scarier than that. By using the Bayesian model averaging, scientists estimated that the universe is at least 250 times larger than the observable universe, or at least 7 trillion light years in diameter. The Bayesian model focuses on how likely a model is to be correct, given the data, rather than asking how well the model itself fits the data. Now, this might not be the best method of estimating the true size of our universe. Still, chances are very high that our universe is nonetheless bigger than the observable universe. The universe is so big because it is constantly expanding, and it does so at a speed that even exceeds the speed of light. Space itself is actually growing, and this is going on for around 14 billion years or so. In this amount of time, with a speed greater than the speed of light, the universe gradually grew, and it still expands even to this day. There isn't actually an answer to why the universe is so big. Many believe that our universe is just 13.8 billion years old. However, this is uncertain until proven with extreme accuracy. Sometimes, we can't even pinpoint the certain age of an object here on Earth, let alone our universe. The universe may be infinite, or it might not be, but again, our perception is at play here. If we will analyze how many stars, planets, and the distances involved in reaching them, and the fact that our universe is expanding, then it certainly seems infinite. Why a new space telescope? The James Webb Space Telescope will be 100 times more powerful than its predecessor, Hubble, and will be capable of capturing extremely faint infrared light from the very first galaxies at the edge of the universe. It will also be able to study planets around other stars in our own galaxy, examining their atmospheres for telltale signs of life. Originally scheduled to launch in 2010 and cost about $1 billion, Webb, a joint venture among U.S., European, and Canadian space agencies that took 10,000 people to construct, experienced a sequence of maddening delays as costs ballooned to $10 billion. But the colossal telescope finally has been shipped to French Guiana in South America, where it will be fitted onto a rocket and blasted into space on December 18, beginning the most technically ambitious mission in NASA history. Should Webb successfully reach its destination nearly a million miles from Earth, the telescope will earn its nickname, First Light Machine, as it sends back images of stars formed just 250 million years after the Big Bang. It's going to help us unlock some of the mysteries of our universe and rewrite the physics books, says Greg Robinson, Webb's program director at NASA. How does it work? The telescope utilizes several novel technologies. It relies on a 21-foot mirror made of ultra-lightweight beryllium chiseled into 18 hexagonal segments and coated with gold. Unlike most telescopes, which house a mirror or a lens within a tube to block out light, Webb's mirrors will be exposed to open space, relying on five parasol-like sheets of aluminum-coated plastic, each as thin as notebook paper and as big as a tennis court, to block out light and heat from the sun, moon, and earth. Webb includes four solar-powered cameras and sensors to collect data. How does Webb differ from Hubble? Hubble launched in 1990, sent back dazzling images from deep space and helped astrophysicists better determine the age of the universe, the nature of black holes, and the number of galaxies. It also led to the discovery that, thanks to dark energy, the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. That's where Webb comes in. By the time that light from a 13 billion year old star reaches Earth, the expansion of the universe has stretched the light's wavelength into the infrared spectrum, 
similar to how a siren's pitch drops as an ambulance speeds away. For that reason, only an infrared-focused telescope is capable of peering into the cosmic dawn. Webb uses mirrors that capture six times more light than Hubble's, and cameras with a 15 times wider view. Hubble orbits the Earth at an altitude of 340 miles. Webb will be positioned out in space roughly four times farther away from the Earth than the Moon for maximum light gathering. What will Webb look for? Answers to astrophysicists' biggest questions. As it travels through space at 186,000 miles per second, light provides images on delay. The naked eye views the Moon as it was 1.3 seconds ago, Jupiter as it was 40 minutes ago, and Andromeda, the nearest galaxy to ours, two and a half million years ago. Space telescopes are often compared to time machines, collecting light emitted billions of years ago. Scientists believe Webb will be vital for studying the end of the Dark Ages, the period between the Big Bang and the formation of stars. That could reveal insights about the dark matter that makes up about 80% of the universe's mass. Webb can see back about 150 million years farther than Hubble and thus may provide glimpses of the formation of the first stars, solar systems, and galaxies says Caitlin Casey, an assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Texas at Austin. With Webb, she says, we are going right up to the edge of the observable universe. The terrifying discovery of two identical galaxies in deep space is finally explained. Galaxies are like fingerprints or snowflakes. There are a lot of them, and they may have many characteristics in common, but no two are exactly the same. So, back in 2013, when two galaxies were spotted together in the far reaches of the universe, in which look surprisingly similar, astronomers were shocked. Now, they have finally solved the mystery of these strange, similar objects, and the answer may have implications for understanding dark matter. The object now named Hamilton's Object was discovered by accident by Shawnee State University astronomer Timothy Hamilton in data obtained by the Hubble Space Telescope nearly a decade ago. The two galaxies appeared to be about the same size and had nearly identical parallel dark streaks on the galactic bulge, the central region of the galaxy where most of the stars reside. It was not until 2015 that a more plausible answer would emerge. Astronomer Richard Griffiths of the University of Hawaii, seeing Hamilton present his object at a meeting, suggests that the culprit may be a rare phenomenon, gravitational lensing. It is a phenomenon that occurs purely as a result of the coincident alignment of massive objects in space. If a massive object sits directly between us and a more distant object, the magnification effect is due to the gravitational curvature of space-time around the nearer object. Any light that travels through this space-time follows this curvature and enters our telescope, which are distorted and distorted to varying degrees, but often magnified and repeated. This makes a lot more sense than two identical galaxies, especially when Griffith found another duplication of the Milky Way. However, a major problem remained. What was causing the gravitational curvature? So Griffith and his team set out finding sky survey data for an object large enough to produce the lensing effect. And he found it. Between us and Hamilton's object lies a cluster of galaxies that was only poorly documented. Usually, these discoveries go the other way. First, the cluster is identified, and then astronomers go looking for galaxies with lenses behind them. The team's work showed that Hamilton's object is about 11 billion light years away, and work from a different team showed that the cluster is about 7 billion light years away. The researchers determined that the galaxy itself is a barred spiral galaxy, with the edge facing us, undergoing strange and uneven star formation. Computer simulations then helped to determine that the three duplicate images could only be created if the distribution of dark matter was smooth at small scales. The two identical side-by-side -side images were created because they spanned a wave in space-time, the region of greatest magnification created by the gravity of a filament of dark matter. Such fibers are believed to connect the universe into a vast, invisible cosmic web, joining galaxies and galaxy clusters and feeding them hydrogen gas. But we don't really know what dark matter is, so any new discoveries that tell us exactly where it is, how it's distributed, and how it affects the space around it will be more than enough evidence. There is one more drop that will eventually help us solve the mystery. Griffiths explained that it is some kind of matter, but we don't know what the constituent particle is, so we don't know how it behaves. We just know that it has mass and is subject to gravity. The importance of the size limit on clumping or smoothness is that it gives us some clues as to what the particle is. 
The smaller the dark matter, the larger the particles must be. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment in the section below. Thanks!